Welcome back to our class. We're on page 20. Fire up your passion for purity. Can one of us please turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 22? Uh, Second Timothy chapter 2, 19 to 22. Yes. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands, having this seed. The Lord knows who are his. And everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. Now in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and of earthenware, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. So as we see that there are vessels of honor and of dishonor. Personal purity, when we purify ourselves, we become that vessel of honor unto God. So cleansing ourselves of whatever is impure is very important and that's necessary. We need to cleanse ourselves to be that vessel of honor in God's hand, in God's house, so that we will be ready for the master's use. The world considers itself normal to be impure, to sin. It's normal. That's the trend. They call it as a lifestyle. But then we, children of God, knowing what pleases God, we need to look at that. We should always remember that we are the temple of the Most High God. We need to keep this temple clean. We need to stay away from the impure, sinful things so that we can keep ourselves pure, uh, 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 pure and it, we can be a, a, a pleasing a vessel of honor unto God, so that God can use us. We can be ready for the Master's use. We not only have to guard ourselves against the impure sin around us, but then what is more important is we need to carry that passion toward purity toward guarding ourselves for, from the other impure things around us and not letting ourselves to be part of it. That is very important. Only when we guard ourselves from all these impure things around us, we can remain pure in, in the sight of God. And we can be the vessel of honor unto Master's use. So we need to set personal and moral boundaries around us for us to maintain this pure lifestyle. Can I request one of us to please turn to Psalms 100, 100 and, 101, chapter, uh, sorry, verse 2 and 3. Can I request one of us to read from our class, like somebody else, like Sid, Anita, Georgia, Roslyn, Jeffina, can others also please take turn and read the scriptures? I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we need to exercise this in wisdom, the prudence to walk in a perfect way before God. Very important to have that perfect heart. How we can uh, uh, walk the perfect way before God. 
only when we set some simple boundaries around us. Very important. The boundaries that we set helps us not to get into any kind of unnecessary trouble or not to have any kind of fall in our life. Personal boundaries help us maintain good character, develop good character. Personal boundaries help us to stay pure. Personal boundaries help us not to uh, have any, uh, any kind of unavoidable fall. We need to set personal boundaries in our life. So there are certain, uh, certain personal boundaries as a men and women of God that we have listed in this book. One that we at APC, at All People's Church, we follow is we don't meet the opposite sex men or women alone in a closed area. If in case we need to speak with the opposite sex, we see to it that we speak in an open space where others are there around us. On purpose, we see to it, you know, or that we have people around us when we speak. For example, our church office uh, has been designed in such a way, completely glass. It's all transparent. And we have kept it the open space for all the staff. And yes, we have few cabins. But even those cabins are used as, you know, uh, the pastor's cabin or for the counseling, for any kind of ministry work we use. But still, even those cabins are transparent. It's made out of glass. So we know who's inside and out. So one of the way that we could avoid any, any uh, you know, any sin could happen within that closed walls. Or in our Bible college, yes, we have walls. But then, you know, we see to it that we keep it open. On purpose, if, we, if you know, I had to meet with somebody else, with a student of the opposite sex, on purpose, I would ask some of the leaders to stay around, you know, stay around, keep the doors open. In that way, we try to set some boundaries ourselves. Another boundary we can see is um, never try to uh, travel uh, with the opposite sex alone in the same vehicle, the same car, or in the bike, unless or until it is an emergency, it's life threatening, or But as much as possible, we need to try to avoid doing that unless and until the opposite uh, uh, sex person is your uh, own family, like your wife, mother, sister, or brother, husband. These are uh, like, we're not telling it's compulsory, you have to do it, but these are certain boundaries that we could set to avoid any kind of fall in our life. And one of the way, um, it's a culture in India is, uh, I, I don't know now, is it there? But yes, there was a time in India, we don't hug the opposite sex. Okay, yes, now the trends are changing. It's becoming more uh, open and we just try to hug anyone and everyone. But then one of the way in the ministry, again, uh, as we are open here, we have many international students as well. I leave it to you. Okay. Um, yeah. What we do is we just shake hands with the opposite sex person. And uh, yes, sometimes we give that comfort and hug uh, for an elderly person or a family related. It can be a wife, daughter, auntie, mother, sister. Same goes with the opposite sex. 
but as much as possible, we don't do this. And these are some simple, um, and uh, uh, yes, they may be simple, but then they are effective boundaries from getting ourselves into trouble. There was a pastor, I know, like he was saying that I don't have a problem with the women and I overcome all that. And, you know, he said, uh, uh, yes, he was married. He had about, um, he had about two or three children. And he said, I don't have any problem. And he had his own personal secretary as women and wherever he traveled, he traveled with her. Down the line, after five years, she comes with the police to his house, claiming that he misbehaved with me. She started blackmailing him, give me five black. If not, I will let out all the secrets that you did with me. The minute the man of God didn't have that much of money to give, she took him behind the bars and it brought shame to him, his family, his ministry. His marriage was in stake. But then by God's grace, they both worked together. That is his wife and him. He repented, he asked for forgiveness. He asked for forgiveness with the church, with the people, with his family, with his wife, with his children. By God's grace, the family has been restored. But then, if the simple boundary would have set right at the initial stage, I'm sure we can avoid such pitfalls in our life. We may consider ourselves wise, but then we need to also know there's an enemy who's around us waiting for a time to devour us. So these boundaries will, will only help us to stay pure, stay on guard when we set ourselves as a minister of God to, uh, to serve God and His people. We need to set ourselves on guard. Stay clean at all private sexual sin. Can one of us please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, 13, 19 to 20. Jeffina, Nixon, Nicholson, sorry, Nikki. Anyone can please read? Ma'am, can I? Okay, Rosalind. Maybe the next verse is somebody else. Please be ready so we all can take turn and be quick and reading. Yes. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Amen. Next verse, 13, and then 19 to 20. Nineteen to twenty, Mom. I read from nineteen. You, you nineteen to twenty also glorify God in your body, yeah, and in your spirit, which are of God's. So God has designed a sexual. Say, God has designed a sexuality. It is part of who God has made us to be. He also has clearly given us the uh, the perimeters within which we are to express and operate and experience our sexuality. But however, as men and women, managing that sexual passion is not, may not be easy. Just because we are the ministers of God, it's not that we have this, um, uh, we don't become an angel to manage all these areas, but then 
it is the grace when we see god and keep certain boundaries around us that we don't give in to such passion when we ask god to empower give us the grace by his word by his holy spirit we can overcome such uh, uh, such passion unhealthy passion from us we normally don't discuss all this in the church we don't uh, uh, put a sermon based around this but then because it is a private life but then if we as a minister of god when we don't set boundaries towards these areas it may lead us into many pitfalls or bondages and we may it may also lead to sin and compromise in this area but if we are careful and guard ourselves set guard around us we can overcome from this area we can uh, we can be clean in this area as well because the word of god says paul says in first corinthians chapter 5 verse 6 he says a little leaven leavens the whole lump a little sin can corrupt our whole nature whole ministry it can affect the whole ministry it can break family and we have seen many families been broken because of um, unhealthy sexual sin married men getting indulged in the sexual sin outside the marriage or some of them before getting into marriage they commit adultery with others so all these things can be avoided the minute we know god is watching over us god knows our intention our thoughts our attitudes and minute we have the sphere of god and we set guard around us in all the areas i think we can avoid such pitfalls in our life such sin in our life with the help of god with the grace of god the minute we have such um, uh, passion uh coming into us or the thought that comes into us and we are struggling in this area with this thought one thing that we need to do is don't keep it to yourself bring it to god you know it is not right when we know it is not right at the same time we need to know we cannot hide from god a god is all knowing he knows everything the minute we bring it to god and pray about it read the word and claim and ask god to bring you out of this desire out of this passion that is burning with the new which is not right god will make a way god will bring your god will cleanse you god will help you to be an overcomer and see to do the right things in the right way if you're single get married and if you're married stay clean stay pure honor your wife honor your husband guard your relationship and even especially for the ministers of god when we are traveling to many places see to it that you don't travel alone but you take a companion with you now this companion should be either your family member your wife or the fellow uh, <laughs> worker it can be the same sex it should not be the opposite sex be very careful and also when you travel when you stay in a hotel uh, see to it that you if you are alone one of the caution is we don't have to watch the tv there because the wrong things can come on the television and uh, uh, corrupt our mind but yeah these days it's everything in our cell phones so even on our cell phones when uh, we tend to use youtube for many good things like watching sermon messages preparing many other areas we use our internet for so we could uh, streamline those videos where we can block certain uh, websites and um, and uh, certain uh, unhealthy videos from popping up so that we don't have to be uh, uh, given into any kind of temptation when we are alone when we are private 
when you are alone at home how you keep yourself because god is watching us when we are alone how do we conduct our life when no one are watching what are we doing they are the some of the ways that we can avoid uh, you know when we read through any kind of books newspapers magazines try to skip and avoid such a nude or unhealthy pictures images that are come that comes our way so that we can refuse and allow uh, and do not allow any kind of unhealthy thoughts or passion to stir within us as we said that we can take captive of any kind of negative thoughts and cast it out in first thessalonians chapter 3 Sorry, chapter four, verse three to five. Can I request one of us to read? First Thessalonians, chapter four, verse three and five, three to five. Brother Abu Bakar, Brother Isaac, Brother Lubega. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse three to five. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God. Amen. Amen. So it is very important that we learn to appreciate and give dignity to our body and not abuse it. As it's common for others to do it, but then we the child of God, we need to keep ourselves pure because God wants us to live a pure life and keep ourselves from any kind of sexual immoralities. So with this we will move on to the next point which says be accountable to God every moment be accountable to God every moment Can I request one of us to please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 to 10 Shall I read now Yes, Jeffina. It's First Corinthians or Second? Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse okay. nine to ten. Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse nine to ten. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due to him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. why we respect and encourage accountability to man whether it be through a uh, through accountability group or leaders or mentors or overseers ultimately all of us come to a place where we are accountable to god himself the fact that one day we will stand before god in his awesome presence before the judgment seat so we are ultimately accountable to god when we have the sense that we are accountable to god our life changes it is not the same as we used to see our life before because everything is been noticed by god every thought every uh, every uh, every feelings you know everything is been noticed by god so it it helps us to keep ourselves much pure and guard ourselves you know uh, uh, much careful than what we do friend of men every act of us will be clean will be pure because we have this conscious that god is watching over us the minute we as a minister of god lead our life in accountable to god knowing that god is watching over me and i need to be accountable to him just this understanding can help us you know and keep us away from many sin many sin around us
this conscious knowing God is watching over me can help us lead our life pleasing to God. It can make our life much more fruitful than what we can make it with our own effort. That's why the word of God says, fear of God brings wisdom. So as a minister of God in all our ways, in all our life, if we lead with this sense in our mind, with this understanding in our mind, that God is watching over us. Our God is a God who sees us, who understands us, and knows every motive of us. And when we discipline ourselves with this understanding, God honors us, and He blesses us, and He makes our life much more fruitful than what you and I can be. So it is very important for us to stay accountable to God at every moment. As a minister of God, we can't say we are full-time ministry, full-time minister or part-time minister. As a believer, as a minister of God, we are in full time. Can I request one of us to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 33 to 35. Acts chapter 20. Yes. Verse 20 to 25. Am I correct? Yes. And how I kept... One minute. Acts watching. chapter 20, verse 33 to 35. I'm sorry. 33, okay. Yes, 33 to 35. I have converted no man silver or good or apparel. Yeah. Ye yourself know that this hand hath ministered unto my necessity and to them that were with him. I have shown the all things how that so laboring ye heart to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it's more blessed blesses to give than to receive. Amen. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. So one of the things, as a minister of God, we must understand that we are to serve God all the time. Just because we may be part of a secular job and then we serve uh, serve God in the uh, in the evenings. Like if you're in a secular job from morning nine to six and in the evening you get into the ministry, you go do some house visit, share the word. So that, that does not mean that you're doing a part-time job. Whatever you do, allow God to be part of your life. Even if you're working, you offer that to God and you work. And when you're ministering, you offer that to God and you serve. Yes, we have seen many leaders in the ministry where initially when they started in the ministry, you know, they were working because financially they need to support themselves. So they worked through the day and they started serving in the evening. So as the ministry grew, as the ministry grew and the ministry needs much of their time, they quit work and they got into full time much later. See, one thing as a minister of God, we need to know that all of us have a call of God in our life. God called David when he was a shepherd boy. Did David become a king immediately or did he wait for a certain period where he can learn and uh, he can train himself, get the full knowledge of king? And there was a time when God appointed him as a king of Judah first and then of Israel later. Did it happen in one day 
or did it take time for the process to take place? Yes. Did it happen one day for David? No. It took time. Just like that, when you and I, as a, as a child of God, as a minister of God, when we receive a call, it is not that I have to quit my job immediately and get back into the ministry. So what happens if you're married? You have a family to take care of. What do we do? So we need to be mindful. Okay. Yes, God has called us. Uh, uh, we need to serve God. But at the same time, there is a time, a point in time where we will get full time into serving God. So what we need to do that. And we should also see to it that we serve God in all the area, even if we are working. Okay, there's nothing called part time, full time in the minister or the child of God. We are all the time. We are full time believers in God. We are full time ministers of God. Whatever area that we are working, we need to serve. We need to, if you are working in a secular company, see to that we be a good employee. We, uh, we uh, show ourselves that we are the child of God and whatever we do will be a blessing. We will keep up that excellent in our work, excellence in our work. We will focus on our work saying, God, I surrender my work to you. Okay, make me fruitful in this area. Make me fruitful in this business. Make me the head and not the tail. And God will bless you. God bless Daniel in the pagan kingdom to serve. God bless Joseph again in Egypt. And he raised him as a minister. The same way, wherever we are, let's not separate God from a secular world or God from a secular work. When we unite ourselves together with God and we work wherever we are, we will be excellent. We will be a blessing. Others around us will see Jesus and us. They will see that he reflects as God. And we see the hand of God on him so that whatever he does prospers, whatever he does flourishes, whatever he does we see uh, being fruitful. So this is one of the testimony that we can carry in our life when we uh, invite Jesus in our work and when we allow him to be part of our life in whichever area we work and we serve. And one more point we can look at is uh, watch our diet, exercise regularly. Can I request one of us to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20? First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. So you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Yes, we have been bought with a price and we need to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are of God's. Our body is a temple of God. We all have experienced the fact that when both our body and mind are doing well, it helps us in our spiritual growth as well. We can pray, we can read the word, we can uh, 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 go about doing minister all around. But if our body has been affected, are we able to serve God in the same way, the way we served before? So we need to take care of our body. It's very important. God desires to glorify himself in our body. So we need to take care of our body in an honorable manner. We need to be very careful because uh, many times as a minister of God, when we step out on the ministry, you know, the host want to treat us with the best of the delicacies of their town, of the cities they can offer us. But then, as a child of God, as a minister of God, we need to take care of our health. Our health. So we need to be watchful on what we eat. So we need to, uh, you know, uh, handle it very carefully. We should not say, no, I don't want, I don't enjoy food, so it's okay, and hurt them. But then, in a in a very well manner, we can just, uh, we can take, we can 
take some of the food and taste it so that they are pleased they are uh, they are happy but not completely feast over it which can overload our body that would be too much for us to take it so we need to be watchful on what we eat because that can affect our body at the same time we need to stay healthy having a proper eating habits and a proper sleeping habits we need to cultivate it so that we can stay fit and strong we should also implement exercise exercising is very important sometimes it, it may be difficult for some of us to keep that in our daily routine but it is one of the, the effective way it helps us when we exercise regularly to keep our body fit and strong so when we keep our uh, body fit and strong and healthy we can serve god in much effective and a better way because we will have a healthy body we can stay strong and we can live long to serve god at the same time so uh, one more important point is having have a personal management plan can i request one of us to please turn to book of titus chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 and the other person can take up uh, second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 Can I request one of you has to please read? Uh, Titus chapter one, verse seven to eight. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy. self control next person can you please read on second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for god did not give us a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power of love and of self discipline thank you thank you so as a bishop as a spiritual leader we must be blameless we must be a steward of god not self willed or quick tempered and we must not be given to wine and not be violent not be greedy for money but hospitable very important and we need to be a lover of what is good and stay away from what is evil and we need to be sober minded just holy self control the word in second timothy chapter 7 chapter 1 verse 7 it says sound mind which literally means self control the holy spirit fills us with the boldness the power the love and discipline to have the self control and the holy spirit also gives us the power to keep ourselves under discipline all body spirit and soul so with the help of the holy spirit we can handle any given situation or circumstance that comes up on our way so that all that has been said in titus chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 we can follow them because we have the spirit of the lord who is with us he will empower us so that we can be blameless we can be a good steward of god we can we can have the self control within us and we will not be given into any kind of emotions that can stir us at times we need to be god conscious when we are god conscious we can handle our life in a much better way that please is god so one of the way uh, we can 
uh, uh, we can man we can handle a personal management that is a personal life in a daily life is having a daily schedule so in a daily schedule a priority should be like spending time with god no matter how busy your schedule could be from morning to evening either you may be working you're doing your business you're studying in a college it can be whatever but in that schedule keep your priority to the personal time with god the secret place with god because it, from that secret place from that time is where you can draw your strength you can draw your wisdom because god is the source of all wisdom all understanding all knowledge so we need to have a priority in setting a time with god spend that time do not compromise that for anything else accepting ministry invitation yes in ministry we may get busy we may get occupied so at the same time we need to choose which one to take which one to leave check our art attitude and also see the person who's inviting you is he trying to fill up space and he's calling you or is he genuinely wanting you to come and share come and impart the revelation the understanding of god what god is doing in your life or in your ministry meeting up church people we need to be there to meet their needs because people want to meet and talk and share uh, uh, their uh, trouble and problem with the minister of god to get the right direction to be prayed for and we need to give time for everyone so when we try to meet people there are some safe boundaries that we need to set ourselves as i said before as we discussed already when we try to meet it's not that we should not minister to the opposite sex we can minister to the opposite sex but in a safe boundary way if you're married have your wife along with you when you minister to the opposite sex if you're single and if the other person who is coming to meet you is married meet that person with his partner or a partner or if you know have a safe setup to or three people around you or with that person when you're ministering it is very important and also one other other way is uh, to meet the uh, person uh, in ministries if you have a office set up it is always good to meet the person at your office at your office or at the safe place or in a in a area where you know uh, it is safe but not some way personally one on one and listen until it is the same sex person solving problem meeting needs we must remind ourselves in this area that we are not god and we are not the savior of this world that we can solve all the problem we can take up every person's need it will only drain us and we will not be able to meet every person's need it is only god so we need to lead the person to god but we can take the responsibility of certain things certain promptings where god wanted you to help certain people certain situations certain family you can go ahead and do that but you cannot do that every time we need to seek god but one thing we can do is ask the person to seek god and god is our ultimate provider he provides for every one's need he is a god who is not partial he meets everyone's need and one of the other is the life plan we need to have a life plan uh, your pastor has given us an example of 10 decades how you can plan your life 5 years ahead 10 years ahead 
so that you you're focused you have a goal you have a vision to lead your life which is more important so because in proverbs we say a man who do not have a vision he falls so when you have a vision yes a vision can always change it can expand it can improve but then you write it down in the book of habakkuk chapter 2 we read that when you write down your vision though it may tarry but it will be fulfilled in the right season we need to write it down there will be a time it will happen but planning and setting goals setting visions in our life is very important so plan ahead for your life 5 years down the line 10 years down the line you can plan your life so live life with a divine purpose we need to have the call and the purpose of god in our mind ahead of us and so that we can set our our life in track to fulfill that call that purpose in our life so all of us each of us who are here in this class and later who join also if we have this divine purpose in our mind we can live our life that uh, that's adding meaning it's meaningful life we can live a meaningful life in this world we can live a legacy we can make a mark and that should be our desire when we have these things uh, in our mind in our head uh, uh, ahead of us we can see our life that we are living is with purpose we plan our life set things what is needed and uh, set aside those things that are not needed to our life and so that we can maintain a simple clean life that would be pleasing to god and we can be that vessel the vessel of honor unto god so with this we are finishing the first chapter in this book called personal life so i would open up to the class if you have any questions you would like to share class said you would like to share something what you learned can i yes yes devya please yeah it was uh, such a wonderful session i appreciate the uh... all these being taught uh, because yeah as you said usually we don't get to uh, you know be mm, taught on these uh, topics right even from a church platform so yeah i really appreciate uh, this being taught yeah may god bless thank you. faculty and thank you. you thank you thank you okay um Yeah, uh, we will end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Devya, can you lead us in prayer? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time, Father, that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through us to Adina, Lord, uh, about Father these topics, Father, that uh, uh, that are really important, Father, Lord. Uh, sometimes, Father, we take for granted, uh, Father, Lord, but uh, we know, Father, that we we are uh, commanded, Lord, to guard our hearts, to guard our minds, Father, Lord. Uh, yes, Father, uh, uh, to uh, to watch out, Father, Lord. For For those uh, pit uh, pit loops, Father, the uh, loopholes in our life, Father Lord, uh, where uh, we can give a foothold to the devil, Father Lord. We pray that you guard us, Father. You guide us by the Holy Spirit, Lord. You help us. keep ourselves, Lord, in purity, Father. Just as you are holy, help us be holy, Lord. and we ask for lord your uh, guidance father the uh, renewal of our minds lord with your word yes father lord and uh, the guidance of the holy spirit in our lives lord yes father uh, uh, help us lord if there are areas where we are struggling father may you intervene father yes lord if we are uh, struggling lord with this uh, disciplines lord if we are struggling father with uh, consistency and um, uh, lord uh, having those spiritual disciplines lord if you are struggling with uh, any uh, father sin lord in our lives father that uh, 
uh, difficult, Father, in our own fleshly, uh, Father, efforts to overcome, Father. Lord, I pray that you empower and equip that uh, we uh, will, uh, Father, Lord, uh, get over, Father, because you have called us as overcomers, Lord. You have called us more than conquerors, Father, Lord. Yes, Lord, um, uh, Father, we know, Lord, that you have given us a victory. Help us, Lord, to live out of that victory that you have given us, Father, Lord, and help us, Lord, that we may bring glory and honor to your name, Father, and be an, uh, Lord, be people, Lord, who inspire faith into others, Lord, who inspire purity and holiness in others' lives, Father, Lord. Uh, thank you and praise you, Lord. Bless Pastor Diana, Father, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you uh, are uh, speaking through her, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for um, uh, the uh, empowerment, Lord, the courage, the boldness, Father, Lord, that uh, you are filling her with, Father, Lord. I pray your blessing over her and each and every student, Father, present here. Thank you, Lord, for edifying us, Lord. I pray, Lord, let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you for the prayer, Divya. Thank you, each one, for joining in today's session. God bless. See you all in the next class. Thank you. God bless.